What's going on guys? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to Throwback Thursdays. This is the weekly segment in which I bring out something old from my collection, play it for you guys, talk to you about it, and tell you what makes it so fucking awesome. Now, if any of you guys are 20 and above, 25 and above, you should know what this game is. This is Alien vs. Predator, the arcade game created by Capcom. This game came out in 1994. So that would make this game a big, pretty 20 years old. And after 20 years, I gotta say, this arcade beat em up is still as beautiful, as fun, as fast, and as, as exciting as it was way back then. Uh, I grew up in, a, in Atlanta, Georgia, and I spent a lot of time down at Greenbrier Mall playing in the, in the game room. Back then, game rooms were very popular. There was always a, a game room or two in every mall back then in the 90s. And uh, my brother and I, we go into the mall. We both had ten, fifteen dollars, and we go into the arcade. And not only would we play fighting games, you know, uh, we would definitely spend time on like Ninja Turtles. We play X Men, and any time I saw Alien vs Predator, this was the game that I wanted to play. This game was so exciting. The way Capcom developed it is just so different from the time. I mean, if you think about most beat 'em ups. You got a attack button, a jump button, and that's pretty much it. This game mixed it up by adding a, a gun button, and you know you can do special or, or unique moves with your attacks. Say, for instance, the young lady I pick, her name is Lynn Kawasawa. She has the ability to slide. If you tap, if you hold down and press jump, she'll slide into enemies and attack. You can jump in the air, hold down and attack to slice down. You can throw enemies in midair. You can charge up her moves by holding down the attack button. Of course, if you press the attack button and the jump button together, she does a special attack. And of course, you get to pull out your gun and fire at enemies. And her gun is, is of course, a man-made gun. But if you pick one of the Predators, it's their shoulder-mounted gun, and it just looks awesome to use. Uh, this game has so much going for it. Unfortunately, they never released this game on any home consoles, and that's hard to believe because this game was very well re received in the arcades. Many people spent a lot of time playing this in the arcade, and I'm talking about there were thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars spent on just on the one that I used to play on. And uh, it just it blows my mind that you know they kind of dropped dropped the ball on that and didn't get this ported down to Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis, but. It probably would have been a, a you know a pretty bad rendition because this game has a lot going for itself. It has good animation. It has an awesome soundtrack. The soundtrack keeps you going. It keeps you moving throughout the entire experience. You got th uh, four different characters. You got um, Lynn Karasawa, the, the chick that I play with. She uh, is half human and she has cybernetic parts as well. She uses a katana blade. And like I said, she uses her gun. You got Major Dutch Schaefer, who was actually uh, created f for Arnold Schwarzenegger's character Dutch in um, the, the Predator movies. And so he is kind of like the Schwarzenegger rendition. He's real slow. He doesn't jump. He just dashes forward and back. And he does basically power attacks. He's like a tank character. You got a Warrior Predator and you got a Hunter Predator. The Warrior Predator is really well balanced. He has long reach. His moves take priority and he's like the best predator. Then you got the hunter who's younger of the two. He plays similarly to the warrior but he lacks the quick recovery and the high priority in his moves. So there's four characters you get to choose. I've always picked Lynn. I, I gotta say whenever there's a game like this I always pick the lady. Some people say why man? And I sum it up to this. I like women and I prefer if I'm gonna play as a character to be able to look at a woman. That's just what I like. I mean I don't know if that's absolutely if you believe it or not, some people believe it, some people don't, some people don't care. I really don't care. I just like playing as chicks. I mean, I play as Nina and Tekken because I like to look at Nina, you know. And Lynn, she kind of reminds me of Chung Lee from Street Fighter. I'm sure they drew a lot of comparisons between her and Chung Lee during the character design. And uh, I, I just don't play as Dutch. He's extremely slow. I don't like it. He's like a tank. The Predators are actually really awesome to play with if you guys ever get a chance to play this game in the arcade, like I said, it has not been ported. If you got a good emulator, you could check it out and play it on your TV like the BC Gamer does. But um, other than that, the story is really good. There's a lot going on. There's many different types of enemies in the game. Of course, you get there's a plethora 
or that's a lot of different alien types. They're they're just basically the drones, and and it gradually steps up throughout the game to different types of aliens or different colors. They have different abilities, and so it switches up your strategy fighting the enemies, and that makes the game you know the replayability great because you you're not going to play it the same way. Of course, they're going to come in waves. They're all going to have different you know things, but th just that alone makes this game so great. You got a ton of different types of bosses. You got to think through these strategic battles. You got you got to fight humans in the game who work for the major company, the corporation, who wants to basically sub submerge any information that any wrongdoing doing is happening. So throughout the game, you got so many different types of enemies to fight. You get to pick up guns and flamethrowers and grenades. It's just a great, great game. The, the plot of the game is this. San Drag, California has been overrun by aliens. And the cybernetically enhanced Major Dutch Schaefer and Lieutenant Lynn Kurosawa have been abandoned by their superiors and are concerned or, I'm sorry, and are cornered by a swarm of alien drones. Before they can be killed, a pair of per predators appears and destroys the aliens. The predators offer an alliance with the two humans in, or in order to stop the alien infestation. The players take control of up to three out of four characters, Dutch Lynn, a predator hunter and a predator warrior and battle the aliens through several environments in the process. The characters discover that the alien presence, presence on Earth is a result of an experiment headed by a renegade General Bush of the United States Colonial Marines in conjunction with the Wayland Watani Corporation. So the Wayland Co Corporation, wow, and it's funny, General Bush, because you <laughs> it's just got to fight it. These Bushes, man, they're always fucking things up. But this game, man, is a really fun game. If you guys get a chance to play it, please do. As you can see, it's a lot you can do in the game. Uh, you can play with your buddies. You know, whatever happened to couch co-op? You know, sitting there and playing with people who you, you know and you can look at them and throw a Cheeto and smack them in the forehead. That's what I like. I love online co-op and multiplayer, but couch co-op needs to stay and uh, local multiplayer needs to stay as well. Now, guys, I want to move on to another little story about E3 we all know that E3 is coming it is it's right on we're on the heels of E3 June next month E3 is going to be afoot and we're going to learn a hell of a lot about 2014 and 2015 and what we can expect out of these new consoles as well as what we can expect out of the ones that are going out I'm sure the PS3 and the Xbox 360 still has some stuff in the wings that's going to excite some people who don't have the next gen consoles just yet but E3 2014, I think, is going to be about the new boys. And uh, Sony has now come out and announced when we can expect to see their news conference. Sony has st uh, started sending out invites for their press conference, confirming the date and time as Monday, June 9th at 6 o'clock p.m. Now, the reason that this 6 o'clock p.m. is important is because it's kind of st strategic. They did the same thing last year where they went last and uh, they came out at the end and killed them and I don't know why Microsoft wouldn't change this or choose to go last this year because last year it was so bad for Microsoft that you know I would be scared to go first because anything they say wrong Sony can come out at the end and say hey we're not going to do that again uh, so this, this right now is the information we got on E3 2014 Microsoft, they're going to be going Monday, June 9th at 9.30 a.m. So they're going to be six hours uh, sooner, I mean nine hours sooner than the PS3, than Sony. So they got quite a few hours before Sony, uh, and they're going to basically reveal everything. Uh, EA is going to be going Monday, June 9th at noon, which is crazy now that, you know, giant companies like EA are at, you know, doing these things on an annual basis when it just used to be the video game console developers and Nintendo Direct is going to be June 10th at 9 o'clock a.m. and the Nintendo Direct is not going to be actually at the E3 they're not going to be physically in the building they're going to do a Nintendo Direct is going to be online and um, it's just going to be what they're they're planning on doing hopefully Nintendo decides to change because E3 has always been a big big deal for gamers it, it, I mean, it is big for me, it's big for you. Nintendo just doesn't seem to agree. Now, what I want to say about Microsoft here, I think Microsoft has some really amazing, mind-boggling, mind-blowing news that they're going to reveal at E3 this year. And the reason I think that 
is because they're going ahead of Sony and not with any issue. It's not like they they're fighting to go last. They're they're willing to go first. So either they have a shit ton of new IPs, old IPs, amazing looking games, games, and that's all we're hearing from them. Uh, it's Phil Spencer, all these guys are just saying, just wait till E3. It's going to be games, 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 and if that's the case. There's reason for everybody to be excited. I think that they're going to come out and have some shit that's going to blow the minds of everybody, including the Sony guys. But I think Sony has it in the bag. Sony's been making a lot of good, good choices, and they, they're they're kind of focused. And right now, they're they're like John Bones Jones. They're on this incredible winning streak, and it's going to take a real knockout punch to sway them. So, if Microsoft comes out of E3 and does something amazing, and you know brings out or shows off some sick ass Halo footage. You know, some you know, some new gears footage, something sick. Um, I wouldn't be surprised, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do this year. I'm so excited for E3. We got us a month left. You guys, let me know what you think about E3. What you think they're going to be revealing this year? I mean, there's a ton of games that are just popping off the top of my head right now. What do you guys think the big reveals will be? Nintendo might be, they potentially might be revealing a new console. They were already talking about starting from scratch and not regurgitating their old stuff. So you guys let me know what you think about E3 2014. Thanks for watching Throwback Thursday. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time.